Well, welcome back. Now on the news edge at 830 request denied Volusia County Schools wanted to add more school resource deputies to deal with some bad behaviors at middle schools, but the county says nope. So Fox 35's Chris Lindsay asked the district, what is their plan now? All in favor of denying uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The Volusia County Council wasn't convinced they should be the ones helping the school district pay for more deputies for the middle schools. They voted the proposal down unanimously. I didn't know that we could go to other taxing authorities, government bodies, and ask them to help pay our bills. Counselors came to an agreement that it's a worthy cause, but since it's the district's job to keep teachers and kids safe, they should foot the more than $300,000 bill. Sheriff Mike Chitwood tells me he thinks a deal could help cut down on the spike in crime. Sadly, we're getting uh, more violent in our middle schools. I completely understand the ask. I completely understand where county council is coming from. Their decision means things will stay the same for now. The seven schools without deputies will remain that way unless the district pays for them themselves. Simple as it sounds. All they need to do is write the check for 300 and some odd thousand dollars and they'll have seven deputies inside of the schools. A spokesperson from the Volusia School District released a statement saying they're disappointed with the result and they felt the discussion surrounding their budget was out of place. They went on to say the safety of students and staff remains their top priority. I heard from parents who tell me they hope more deputies are added and to them, it doesn't matter who pays for it. We do need more security there. Absolutely. If they can do it, they need to do it. Something has to happen. Reporting in Volusia County, Chris Lindsay, Fox 35 News. Well, the Brevard County School District is also discussing safety. The board is considering expanding its school guardian program by arming teachers. It was discussed during a meeting two weeks ago. Well, the board says it still needs some more time and information, so the issue may not be voted on at least for several more months. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing some oral arguments in a major gun rights case right now, and supporters are now rallying outside. So the protesters are asking the justices to not overturn a federal law that bans people from owning guns if they are under a domestic violence restraining order. A lower court struck down the ban, and the Biden administration is now appealing that. Just because oral arguments are today does not mean that we can't influence the court about how wrong it would be not to rule in favor of survivors. The Supreme Court is expected to hand down a ruling on the case by the end of June. Well, a scary speed bump in Brevard County. So take a look at this. You can see some vehicles are driving by and they're literally just like flying in the air, going airborne when they hit that bump. Well, Fox 35's Esther Bauer spoke to the mayor who wants this fixed now. Part of this crosswalk is still under construction here on Fifth Avenue, so these warning signs are still covered up with a black tarp. Now drivers say this is a concern because this new bump is catching them off guard. So the new speed bump opened just last week, but I want you to take a look at this. This road is already severely scraped up from so many cars going over the bump. That sound will startle anyone behind the wheel. There's going to be a lot of alignment problems with the cars, making it very dangerous. Vehicles scraping the pavement on this newly installed elevated crosswalk in Indy Atlantic. Our cameras captured half a dozen doozies in about a half hour. And all of a sudden my car went up in the air and came back down and I was like, what the hell? The mayor says the goal of the speed bump was pedestrian safety because Fifth Avenue is getting busier. I like the idea of the safety being increased, you know, um, but my concern would be how it affects emergency services, you know, such as the ambulances or police, something like that. Now Mark McDermott says the drivers in his town are frustrated. They're concerned with how slow you have to go. They're concerned with um, the damage to their cars. All along Fifth Avenue, the mayor says FDOT is planning to install four elevated crosswalks, which will help people safely cross the road. Sometimes it's hard to ride your bicycle around here, and this actually slows it down and gives you a chance to get across the street. But the community is asking FDOT to look into a different design before building the rest of the bumps. Seemed a little high, seemed a little wide, too. Maybe also have some sort of warning for the drivers to be able to slow down. They're probably used to going uh, 40, 45 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden they hit this, they don't know about the speed bump. 
And we did just hear back from the Department of Transportation. They tell us they plan to be at tomorrow's town council meeting and they want to work with the city to come up with a better solution to this issue. Reporting in Indy Atlantic, Esther Bauer, Fox 35 News. Esther, great story. Well, FDON is recommending a new possible SunRail route, and that would connect Orlando to Lakeland. The path would add stops in cities like Haines City, Winter Haven, and Auburndale. However, the county commission is worried about the cost. They say it may be better to spend the money on a plan to just widen I-4 because the train would only connect Polk County to downtown Orlando. They would like to see it connect to Walt Disney World as well because that's where many residents in Polk County actually work. What's wrong with it is we do not have an unlimited supply of money and this is uh, will come at a tremendous cost. So if this is approved by the county, the entire line wouldn't open until 2035 at the earliest. OK, so the two dollar bill you may have be it might be worth a lot. It might be more than just two bucks. A recent auction just saw one sell for almost twenty five hundred dollars. Experts say there has always been interest in the two dollar bill since its release in 1862. By the 60s, they were discontinued, but then they made a comeback years later. If you're looking for a high dollar uh, $2 bill, it would be pre 1900 and it would have to be in a very high condition. Well, this is interesting. So some things you want to look out for is a red seal versus the green one we use today and years dating back before the 60s. That is the key. OK, there you go. All right, well, an NFL Hall of Famer Jim Kelly was in Orlando today talking about his battle with cancer. Fox 35's Kelsey Karens had the chance to speak to the former Buffalo Bills quarterback at the Florida Association of Health Plans conference. Well, a lot comes to mind when we think about Jim Kelly. The obvious, he's an NFL Hall of Famer. He led the Buffalo Bills to four Super Bowl appearances, was a five-time Pro Bowler, even has a Florida connection. He played for the Miami Hurricanes from 1978 to 1982. But perhaps more recently, his battle with oral cancer and his unwavering spirit is how he's inspiring the masses. Many years ago, I probably wouldn't be thinking about this, but God prepared me for what I'm doing now. Jim Kelly was Tuesday's keynote speaker for the Florida Association of Health Plans annual conference. I came up with a motto, make a difference today for someone fighting for their tomorrow. He used his platform to draw comparisons from his time on the field to his ongoing cancer battle. I might have lost four Super Bowls, but I kicked cancer's butt. Four times. And kicking cancer's butt required surgeries to his jaw, radiation, and chemotherapy. You've been through a lot of surgeries, a lot of treatments. Uh, what kept you motivated? Well, number one, of course, my faith. Uh, having a great wife and two beautiful daughters and five brothers that would never let me give up. He also credits his late son Hunter's battle with a rare genetic disease as more motivation. I saw that everyday battle he had, and I looked at that and I said, you know what? What I'm going through is nothing compared to what he's going through. Now, Kelly also told me for anyone who is currently battling cancer or perhaps you have a family member or a loved one currently fighting, he says never lose the faith. This FAHP conference ends Wednesday. Reporting in Orlando, I'm Kelsey Cairns, Fox 35 News. I love that motto. All right, well, still to come, some people are paying to travel without their phone. Not everybody is on board. I feel I need my phone all the time. I go, I get twitchy if I don't have it. You hear that? She gets twitchy. Well, we hear from the travel experts who say this could help you actually have a better experience. And Brooks. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's that? What's that, Deborah? Oh, oh, I'm on TV. I'm going to have to hang up. <laughs> all right, weather-wise, we've got a front coming in for this weekend. It's going to put a little bit of a pause on our beautiful weather pattern. I'll show you how long that'll last coming up.
welcome back. Well, more millennials are opting not to have kids. Some researchers say the economy is partly to blame for this new trend. Young people are dealing with just soaring student loan debt and housing prices that are just skyrocketing. But the number one factor that influences how a generation decides is on how they want to have kids is actually how they were raised. Millennials and millennial women are rebelling against their Gen X and, and baby boomer parents who, in a instance of the individual, maybe felt like their parent wasn't really there for them. Maybe they weren't there for the soccer practices or the dance recitals. And so millennial women could be choosing their career now so that they can choose their family later. Well, on the upside, experts say millennials are being intentional about who they spend their life with before they get to the next question of whether they should start a family. All right, well, it is a battle in many bedrooms. Should pets be allowed to sleep in the bed with you? Well, Fox 35's Adina Canfanati took that question straight to the doctor, and that answer might actually surprise you. If you don't have a pet, you might find the very premise of this discussion a little ridiculous. Should you let animals share your bed? The obvious answer seems to be no, but Dr. Alicia Roth has a different perspective, and she's the doctor. There's no right or wrong answer for this. Um, it really depends on your comfort as the human and your pet's comfort and what's best for them. Um, and that might be a, a learning process when you first get your pet. Dr. Roth is a psychologist who specializes in sleep medicine. She says if your pet is constantly jumping up and down from the bed, making noises or otherwise distracting, it may not be a good idea to sleep with the pet. She knows it might be nice to have them by your side, but it should not come at the cost of your sleep, which is important to your overall health. However, if you and your furry friend have found a comfortable arrangement when sleeping, then she doesn't see an issue. In fact, for some people, it could actually be beneficial. Animals can offer a source of comfort and security, making you feel calm. And, and on the pet side too, it provides, it can provide them with great emotional comfort and security. Um, for some people, their pet is like a, an alarm for, for waking up in the morning or an alarm for maybe something happening in the house um, or, you know, an intruder or, you know, any activity outside. So um, there are lots of benefits to sleeping with your pet. All right, well, that was Dina Santofani reporting for us. Okay, so Brooks, me and you were just chatting, and we are both team right. no dogs yeah. in bed. Well, in Florida, it, we, we got a lot of germs outside. We yeah. got fungi and bugs and fleas and ticks. dog poo and a few ticks. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's not like being up north where it's more simple. Yeah. There's just a lot of stuff. And, you know, once it's in your comforter, you can't really get it out. And right. it's in your mattress and then the dander and then the hair and then... You, you're very wrong. opinionated about this. Well, I've got topic. two large dogs. They love to sleep in my bed. And so right. I'm, I'm actually uh, exhibiting some guilt <laughs> at uh, making them sleep out on the Florida room. But um, yeah, that's a no for me. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I love cuddling with dogs, but in bed, I'm like, nope, clean clothes. Yes. No dogs. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of just dog weather out there. <laughs> the dog days of yeah, summer are gone. Yeah, the dog days are gone. We look forward to three dog nights to stay warm. <laughs> and uh, well, none of those are in our forecast. It's going to be in the mid 80s. cuddle with them, though? Is it going to be cold? Uh, uh, no. Okay. No, no. We're back. No. Yeah, not <laughs> cuddling. You know, we were talking about the super fog stuff out of Louisiana. Unfortunately, we don't have to deal with that here, this mix of smoke and, and fog, because there's no real smoke out there to contend with. But we might have some areas of fog in the morning tomorrow. Just a heads up, especially along the St. John's River and I-4 corridor. Uh, crossing fingers, it doesn't get too, too dense. But be aware of that for tomorrow morning's commute. 72 degrees outside right now. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Hardly cold outside. The air feels a little damp, though. There's a, there's a little bit of humidity out there. We're going to see temperatures dipping into the 60s by 11. And so if you're going out late tonight and your car's parked outside, you may have like a layer of dew on your car. Here's a live view from our Launch Credit Union Port Canaveral cam. That is a Falcon 9 staged to take flight tonight at 11.31 p.m. 95% chance for a go that this reaches for the stars and in doing so deposits some Starlink satellites on low orbit. Well, tomorrow morning for the bus stop forecast with the fog in the forecast, I would recommend a sweatshirt at the bus stop 62 degrees up to 84 by three. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon. Our weather spotters talking about beauty, talking about a gorgeous day today. Lynn Long and Gotha, one of our newest spotters, 80 degrees today. Joel Mathis and Claremont 86. Mike in St. Cloud 82. 
and Rita Simon in Palm Bay had 81 degrees. Meanwhile, in the north, we had some warm spots here, especially in the villages. 88 for Dave Meeker, 85 for Debbie Carroll in Ocala, also a new spotter for us. Mark Miller, Ocala, 82. Don Woolley in the villages, 86, and Jeannie in Deltona, 85 degrees. We love your reports, and if you want to join the ranks of the Fox 35 Weather Spotter team, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, fox35stormteam at fox.com with your name, where you live, and don't forget a photo to use. Photos are good. I'll have a whole new slew of spotters coming up at 10 o'clock, but it'll look like this. And, um, yeah, we have a lot of fun with it. Good chance to get to know you and vice versa. Hey, you know what the good news is too? There's no tropical activity happening out there and none expected over the next seven days. Uh, the hurricane season officially doesn't end until the end of this month, so we have to stay on guard. We're coming up on the anniversary later this week of Hurricane Nicole last year, which did a number, to say the least, on so many communities along our Atlantic coastline. All right, as far as our forecast goes, beautiful conditions through the weekend, but then on Sunday, the changes occur. A front makes its approach from the northwest, ushering in cooler air by Monday, and in doing so, producing some showers and storms. Most of this activity showers. It'll also become windy Sunday and Monday, a northeast flow establishing helping to usher in the cool air, but definitely blowing things around out there. So it's going to be a totally different weather pattern for us for the start of next week. That's a big difference in this 85 degrees and serene conditions we've enjoyed. It'll result in cooler weather for at least the first two or three days of next week before we get back to the warmer stuff. 64 degrees right now, Daytona Beach. The waves calming down a bit and they'll remain so through the end of this week and the first half of the weekend. Moderate risk for rip currents. Surf at three feet, high tide tomorrow at 4 p.m. But a heads up that early next week, the wave action is going to increase and the rip current risk will become dangerous once again. 52 tonight in Gainesville, 67 at Cocoa Beach, 59 in Bithlow tonight for low temperature and 59 degrees in Claremont. For tomorrow, high temperature 84, mid 80s through Sunday. Saturday is Veterans Day and looking ahead to Monday, a 30% chance for some rain as that front slips into the region and we cool down from the mid 80s to the mid 70s. All right, stay with us. We've got more Deborah and more news after this.
Welcome back. OK, check this out. This is the second heaviest Burmese python ever caught in Florida. It took five men to get that massive reptile. But even as Fox 35's Marley Capper shows us this snake, as you can imagine, put up a big fight. Wow. You don't really anticipate uh, what what a 17 foot python is. Her head was the size of a football. A Burmese python so big. It literally took all five of us to get her uh, under control. And trying to catch it was no easy task. And my son grabbed her by the tail and the other three guys all piled on in the middle and with all five of us sitting on top of her, she was still literally able to lift her body off the ground and, and keep moving. It was, uh, it was crazy. Mike Elfenbein, who's been hunting and fishing in Florida his entire life, stunned about the size of this invasive species. I'm not kidding, it took every bit of energy we had to do this. While hunting in the Big Cypress National Preserve last week, he didn't even realize what he was seeing. No, at first in the headlights, it looked, because the size wasn't anything we comprehended with a python, it looked more like an alligator. This python smashing his previous record. Until the other night, my, my personal best was 10 feet, four inches. This comes just days after a 12 foot python was caught in Brevard County. Elfenbein says that doesn't surprise him. But Rhodes only reflects 1% of the places where you could find them. Experts tell us these massive snakes are on the move. This map shows how the pythons have been migrating farther north over the years, closer to central Florida. A lot of times people think that they can't withstand the cold, but they just go underground. And so these snakes can extend much further north than maybe we think. And reproducing. If you find one, Elfenbein says, don't ignore it. Do whatever you can, because the reality is, is that while you're sleeping at night, these things are eating the things we uh, hold dearest uh, to society, and that is our natural resources. Marley Capper, Fox 35 News. I would hate to run into that thing. All right, well, training tonight, would you travel the world without your phone? One travel company is offering that unplugged experience for the love of travel is a company offering these group trips. So their target audience is the millennial in Gen Z range and putting the phone down, they say, can help people break boundaries they may not need to if they actually had their device. Embrace the challenge of of having to ask people for directions or having to ask someone to translate something for them and asking people for help. What makes travel and life interesting is the connections that you make with people. So the destinations for the 2024 phone free trips include <laughs> Italy, Cuba and Costa Rica. What do you think, Brooks? I mean, you know, it's an interesting concept. I think I'd be a little bit like personally not feeling like very secure if I didn't have like, you know, my map there. Right. Um, but no, I, I see where they're coming from. And you also have to carry a camera because like if you don't have your phone, then, you know, oh, you don't have a true. camera and that's a that's a burden. So, right. I don't know. right. It's an interesting concept, but I don't see it. I don't see it. I can see why they're targeting the millennial and Gen Z generation right. because I mean, you go everywhere and they're always on their phone. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're all guilty of it. Just but... unplug, force yourself to unplug. Yeah, but yeah we'll maybe for like goes. a day, but for a whole yeah. trip. I know. I'm not signing up that's for that. Well, you'd have to be good at the language, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight at the News Edge at 8. The news continues over on Fox 35 News at 10 and 11. We'll see you then.